Hey, what up everybody? This is Stephen Breach coming to you, breaking down this Sunday's big football game for the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers are going to be going up against the team that honestly is like a copy and paste situation of the same team they have, the Carolina Panthers. Carolina Panthers coming in off of a four-win streak. Uh, they haven't been playing the best teams, but four wins is four wins, especially when you uh, combine up and see that they're beating these teams by an average of over 20 points. Uh, but, uh, of course, you can uh, look at uh, Cam Newton, uh, as good as a quarterback as uh, Colin Kaepernick is. They have a great running uh, game. They have the well-balanced receivers. They have a great defense. This is going to be a tough game for the San Francisco 49ers. A lot of things on the Carolina Panther blogs is uh, trying to see, you know, how the Panthers live up. And this is the big game that they're going to use as their coming out point to prove to the NFL team that, you know, they're a playoff team. They want to be in the hunt. And uh, they believe that they are a better football team than uh, their previous records has shown. Um, I've always hated uh, the Carolina Panthers ever since uh, George Seifert retired for the San Francisco 49ers and took the job to go over there and coach there. Uh, I've always never really liked going over and playing this team. Uh, one of the players that I really hated uh, in my youth was a uh, running back named Tim, uh, Tim Biaka Tim Biaka Batuka. I hated this guy. This guy always carved us up. Uh, if it wasn't for him having a, a knee injury, uh, I think that this guy was one of the greatest running backs in football in his time, and he, and he would have uh, ate up a whole lot more yards, and I think Carolina Panthers probably uh, would have went on to a whole lot more success as faster, uh, uh, faster than they've uh, achieved it this far. Uh, of course, everybody can remember being in, I believe, their second year in the league, going all the way to the uh, NFC Championship game, and then just sort of falling off the face of the earth after that. But, um, man, uh, you know, I, I'm the kind of guy, I'm a realist. I don't like to come out and say that this is an easy game for the San Francisco 49ers because of the teams that the Panthers have been playing and the Panthers have beat. I think this is honestly a team that could show up and, and beat us, especially with us coming off a... Uh, uh, a bye week after being uh, over in London to playing Jacksonville, beating them so decisively, and um, you know maybe maybe taking this week a, a little lightly. It's going to take a whole lot of uh, uh, pushing for the cushion. Uh, I think that there's a lot of people showing up into camp, uh, practicing with the Niners right now. Of course, with uh, Mario Manningham uh, coming back last week, Michael Crabtree um, being. Uh, physically fit in order to practice. Of course, Alden Smith coming back, making headlines. I, I know when the 49ers activated Alden Smith and put him back on the roster, I thought it was just to uh, put him on the roster, not having really anybody else to put on there. But how the NFL hasn't stepped in and uh, suspended this guy and made sure that he's not playing for a paycheck really boggles my mind. And the quotes that he's been saying really doesn't really make it any easier for me for him to say that He's really grown up in this situation in the last few weeks and that he feels like uh, he's in a much better place. He's been gone for three weeks. I understand that, you know, like when you get caught doing something and you're in trouble and you get you know punished for it, it, you know, you might feel like you're in a better place because you're not getting away with something anymore. But and it's, you know, sort of been put up on Front Street and everybody can see it. But how you can really say that this is over and you, is is a whole nother thing. I'm sure that this guy is going to be heavily monitored and heavily watched for everything that he does in his personal life for the next, you know, oncoming years uh, that he's on the San Francisco 49ers, whether if it's uh, NFL security following him around or something like that. But uh, uh, hopefully, I wish him all the best. Uh, but, I, I mean, the defensive line for the uh, San Francisco 49ers honestly really hasn't been sluggish since he's left. It hasn't really been like they haven't been getting in on... Uh, and, and the uh, opposing quarterback spaces or anything like that. So um, I, I say hold off Alvin Smith until you know, you're know you really, really sure that you really need him and that he is honestly really, really ready to play because uh, I honestly haven't really noticed a difference in, in our defensive line since he's been gone. Honestly, yes, when he is at the top of his game, he is one of the best uh, you know linemen in the league, of course, last year with 19 sacks in the NFL, uh, almost uh, tying the NFL record. Falling for uh, falling uh, short, not getting a sack in the last two weeks, but um, yeah, I'm really surprised that he is coming back. Once we can get Crabtree and uh, Manningham, I think that uh, Colin Kaepernick's passing game is really going to open up, which is uh, just going to leave more holes for Frank Gore. How Frank Gore does what he does, when everybody knows that we're going to be handing the ball to him the 20 to 30 times a game, is just beyond me. That guy is just 
awesome, and I'm glad that he's on our football team. Looking forward to a great game on Sunday and uh, another 49er win. Let's see what we can do, guys. Peace out.